This is a 1923 Ford Model T. It is 100 years old. Ford began making the Model T 15 years earlier, but it wasn't until this year that they reached their peak production, selling 2 million in 1923 alone. This car changed the automotive world, but not because there is anything special about the car. The real change came from the assembly line that the car rolled off of. The real change was that they made 15 million of them. A model production record that stood for almost 50 years. This is a 2023 Tesla Model Y. It is zero years old. Tesla began making cars 15 years ago, and they are expecting to sell 2 million of them in 2023. Most of those sales will be the Model Y, which is among the best-selling cars in the world. Tesla has changed the automotive industry, and not just because of the powertrain. They are pushing the manufacturing envelope, changing the way people buy cars, and pushing forward advanced driver assistance systems with a zeal that some would call reckless. These companies were founded almost exactly 100 years apart. Both of them were 20 years old when they made these cars. These cars are both four-door sedans. They were both built in 23. Their names are very similar. Almost exactly the same. Just a little like that. That's it. They were both preceded by a Model S, and they have both changed the way people think about cars. The difference between these two cars is nearly the entire history of the automobile industry. But it's how similar they are that's really the fascinating part. So join me as I compare two incomparable cars. On the surface, there are a lot of things about these cars that are similar. They both have four wheels, four doors. They both have a steering wheel and a windshield. They both do the same thing. They move people and things from one place to another using the power of stored energy. But once you start to look under the skin, you start to see that these cars do a lot of the same things, but they do them in a vastly different way. So we're going to go through some of the differences in driving, technology, and build quality, and we're going to assign a winner to each one of these attributes. We'll start with driving. In terms of actually driving the car, both of them have a steering wheel, but that's pretty much where the similarities end. The Model T has three pedals, but it's not the three pedals that you may be used to. The one on the left is called the clutch, but it's more like a gear selector. Forward is low, back is high, and the middle is neutral. The middle pedal is reverse, and the one on the right is the brakes, or brake rather. More on this in a bit. It does have a parking brake. To shift into low, you have to release the parking brake and press the pedal. To shift into high gear, you first move the parking brake all the way forward. This will allow the gear selector to move back into high gear. The throttle is the lever on the right side of the steering wheel. The lever on the left adjusts the ignition timing. To start the car, you add a little throttle, retard the timing, switch the electrical system from magneto to battery, and press the starter. Then switch it back to magneto, adjust the timing, adjust the throttle, let off the parking brake, shift to low, and start moving. Build up speed in low gear, and then switch to high gear. When you want to slow down, you have to apply the brake, but before you apply the brake, you have to engine brake. To do that, you reduce your throttle, but you can't just reduce the throttle, you also have to retard the ignition timing. This will slow you down, and then when you're almost stopped, you can apply the brake pedal. The brake squeezes an oil-soaked cotton band onto a spinning drum inside the transmission. It's more of a suggestion than what you might think of when you hear the word brakes. Plan ahead. Once you get going, it's pretty much cruise control, but getting up to speed and slowing down requires a lot of controls and a lot of remembering what those controls do. To drive the Model Y, you press this pedal to accelerate. To slow down, you stop pressing this pedal. So that's how you drive the cars, but how do the cars drive? How fast do they drive? To find out, we lined up both cars for a quarter mile drag race on this mostly empty road that is a closed course as far as you know. Okay, I'll be honest, we didn't really race the Tesla, but we did actually run the Model T a full quarter mile as fast as it would go, and it took a while. We know the Model Y can do a quarter mile in 12 seconds. The Model T takes more than 12 seconds. By the way, this is the real pace. The Model T tops out at 35 miles per hour and comes in at a quarter mile time of... 37 seconds. Putting our real Model T quarter mile run next to our might as well be real Model Y run shows the Tesla winning by 68 car lengths. Impressive considering that a quarter mile is 88 car lengths. I think we have to give this one to Tesla.
The Model Y will automatically move the steering wheel and seat to make it easier to get in and out of the vehicle. Neat but complex, requiring half a dozen motors, the Model T does this with a simple lever. The Tesla windows roll up and down with a touch of a button, but the Model T windows also go up and down. The rearmost window using this simple latch and a spring inside the door to counterbalance the weight of the window. The front windows roll up by sliding along this complex gear train, sliding in the slots of the gears and handing off the window to the next gear with each rotation. You can see this pattern in the window. This is wild. Seems unnecessarily complex, but as a mechanical engineer it gives me a warm fuzzy feeling. The Model T has a spare tire, it's just the rim and the tire, and you just change that part, leaving the wooden wheel on. The Tesla, no spare tire. On the Tesla, the controls for the driver are all in this center touchscreen, which seems neat, but is kind of frustrating when you're driving and you want to adjust the air conditioning. Some things need physical knobs and levers, like the Model T. You want air conditioning? Flip this lever here, which opens this vent up here, giving you a nice breeze of air. A hundred years of development, and we've only made things more difficult. You might think this is an easy win for the Tesla, and if you're driving on a perfectly flat road, you'd be right. But in a lot of cases, the Model T wins. The Tesla has very stiff suspension, especially with the performance version like this one. Going over bumpy, uneven roads is not terribly comfortable. The springs are so stiff that the car can drive around corners fast, and the sidewalls are thin so you can look super cool. And all this is fine when the roads are smooth, but how often are there smooth roads really? The Model T was designed at a time when roads were mostly non-existent. It has softer tires, tons of suspension articulation, and loads of ground clearance. In the Tesla, you have to slow down for speed bumps, but in the Model T, you barely have to slow down for a cliff. On good roads, Tesla wins. On bad roads, it's a pretty rough ride. And off-road, it gets pretty sketchy. Both of these cars have four wheels and they both have four doors. In this case, the similarities are a little bit deeper. These are 21 inch wheels. These also 21 inch wheels. The outside of the doors on both cars is aluminum. This is not super common on Model Ts, but these are original aluminum doors. The outside is aluminum anyway. The door structure is wood. It's just the outside skin that's metal. Actually, most of the body of this car is wood with a metal skin. Structurally, the body is wood. The wheels also wood. Wood is doing a lot of heavy lifting on the Model T. The Model Y has one piece of wood, and it's doing no lifting. It exists only for aesthetic reasons. What the Model Y does have a lot of is plastic. So much plastic. The dash, the door cards, the console, these seats that look like leather, they're plastic. The electrical connectors and switches and front trim and front and rear bumper, all plastic. The Model T came from the factory with no plastic. Not a single piece. This is probably because the first plastic patent didn't get filled until a year after the car started production. The steel used on Model T cars is vanadium steel. It's a higher strength, lightweight steel. It's also easily machinable, making it easier to machine 10 engines at a time and pump out 2 million cars a year. The floorboards are wood. There is a story, maybe apocryphal, that Ford used wood from crates that suppliers shipped parts in to make the floors. Tesla uses lightweight modern materials, but the Model T weighs considerably less. In fact, the early runabout models weigh only slightly more than the Model Y battery. This probably has a lot to do with safety, but we'll get into that in a minute. For now, we're giving this one to the Model T. Speaking of safety, the Model T has the fuel tank underneath the seat. Fuel is gravity fed into the engine, there is no fuel pump. The Model Y, similarly, has its battery under the seats, it also has no fuel pump. It does have an oil pump, too actually, and a couple of coolant pumps. This is all controlled by a very complex and clever thermal management system that sort of moves the heat and cold around where it needs to be. The Model T has no coolant or oil pumps. The oil is distributed in the engine by just being flung around by the crankshaft, and the coolant moves around by a method of passive heat exchange called thermosiphon. The Tesla uses an electrically assisted rack and pinion steering. This rack can steer the car by itself. There is a motor attached here that rotates and slides the rack side to side, turning the wheels. The Model T has an arm hanging off the end of the steering shaft. To keep this lubricated, you just put some grease on the cap here and then periodically tighten it down a little bit, squeezing grease into the shaft. The Tesla has an 82 kilowatt hour battery running at 400 volts when it's fully charged. It's made from several lithium ion cells and has a lot of complex electronics to keep it happy. The Model T originally came with no battery. The early ones were all hand crank. By the time this one came out, the cars had six volt batteries, though you can still hand crank it to start. 
The original headlights worked by burning acetylene gas. This one came with electric lights, though they are not terribly bright, not even as bright as the LED daytime running lights on the Tesla. While both of these cars do similar things, those things are almost always done in fundamentally different ways. But there are a few things that still work the same way. The differential on both of these cars is the same. There are two differential gears, each attached to an output that goes to a rear wheel. Those gears are rotated in a cage that contains spider gears to allow the wheels to rotate independently. The Ford has three spider gears while the Tesla has two, and what happens before and after the differential is all different, but it's pretty cool to see a solution unchanged after a century. Possibly the biggest difference on these cars, even more so than the power plant, is the transmission. The Model T has three drums inside. Remember those three pedals? They each go to a different drum. Around each drum is a band, and inside each band is a strip of cotton soaked in oil. Pressing each pedal squeezes its corresponding band, which stops that drum from spinning. When you pull the parking brake, it mechanically moves the gear shift pedal into neutral. This very front drum is reverse. When you press this pedal, it squeezes this drum, which causes the transmission output to spin backward, letting you drive in reverse. The middle band is low speed. When you press this pedal, it forces the engine rotation to go through planetary gears, giving a lower gear ratio. In high gear, all of the bands are open, but this clutch on the back is activated, connecting the engine directly to the drive shaft. This last drum is the brake. When you press this pedal, it squeezes the band and stops everything from rotating. But this is not four hydraulically assisted brakes, one on each wheel. This is an oil-soaked, squishy cotton band. This is your brake, and it's part of the transmission. This is a very simple approach to having a transmission with reverse and two speeds. But it's not even close to the simplicity of the Tesla, which has one speed and a simple gear reduction. Ford changed the way cars were made with the Model T, developing materials and technologies that allowed them to build more cars than anyone else thought possible. The parts were all interchangeable, any car could use any door, the production line was moving, instilling a sense of urgency and ensuring a specific output rate. Parts were made by the dozen or more. Tesla has also pushed the envelope in manufacturing. The company built an entirely new, fully automated vehicle production line. And then they couldn't get that to work, so they ripped it all out and replaced it with a regular manufacturing line inside a tent. Okay, so Tesla is still working out the kinks, but they do have some impressive manufacturing innovations, like replacing dozens of welded and riveted body parts with one giant casting. This is Elon's real superpower, things that are technically feasible but seem preposterous. Still, not even close to the same impact that Ford had on manufacturing. The Model T is famous for being reliable and famous for being resilient. You can still sometimes find these cars in fields mostly intact. That steel I was talking about earlier, it's also good at holding up to decades of weather. As more cars were made, more roads were built and maintained, so the Model T's capability in driving off-road turned into a tendency to last a long time. A look at the controls will give you the impression that this is a complex vehicle, but its strength is in its simplicity. The car does not have bells and whistles. The speedometer was an aftermarket add-on. The fuel gauge is a stick. Simplicity is reliability, and the Ford is about as simple as it gets. A look inside the Tesla will give you the impression of simplicity, but under the skin it is complex. The Model Y's reliability is lower than average, its build quality is even worse. Tesla is notorious for delivering cars with major panel gap issues. I had a friend who ordered a brand new Model Y that showed up from the factory with curb rash. This is true, and they fixed it for him, but how crazy is it to have a brand new car show up at your house already damaged? Tesla is playing with fire by continuing to push delivery numbers over build quality. This is a reputation you do not easily get rid of. Ford has a reputation for quality, and they've had one for over a hundred years, partly because of this car. The Model Y is one of the safest cars ever made. The likelihood of injury in this car is extremely low. It has airbags in the dash, the seats, the cant rails, it has crumple zones, steel reinforced pillars, automatic tensioning seat belts. You can drive it off a cliff and you'll be fine. If a car pulls out in front of you, it will automatically stop. The Model T has flat glass that will shatter into dangerous shards if you look at it wrong. There are no crumple zones, no airbags, no seat belts. You sit on the gas tank. The brakes are a gentle suggestion, so if somebody pulls out in front of you, you are going to die. Given the sketchy brakes and the glass, I'd say that driving this car is less safe than riding a motorcycle even without a helmet. This is easily the least safe car I've ever driven, and I have driven some sketchy stuff. It's so bad that instead of giving Tesla a point, we're just going to take one away from Ford.
Some people might be a little chaffed by the guy in charge of the company that made this car based on his dubious claims, his unrealistic timelines, and his penchant for expressing some polarizing opinions. But the guy in charge of the company that made this car kind of liked the Nazis. So we're going to give this one to Elon. These cars could not be more different, but in some ways they and the companies that make them are eerily similar. They are on common paths a hundred years apart. It is relatively easy to make a car, I've done it a few times. It's more difficult to make a hundred cars, and it's vastly more difficult to make 15 million cars. It was basically impossible before 1908 when the Model T came out. The real impact of this car was how it was made. Moving assembly lines, interchangeable parts, engine blocks milled a dozen at a time, Ford did not change the automobile, it changed the way the automobile was made, and by doing so, it changed the world. Tesla has also changed the world. I worked for Tesla for about five years starting in late 2009, and one of the most interesting things about working there was watching the world's opinion change. At first it was, nobody's going to buy an electric car, and if they do, they're not going to buy it from some startup in California. Five years later, those same people were talking about Tesla's success as though it had always been a foregone conclusion. We don't really know what Tesla's success means, and we won't really know the impact of the company and this car for a while. In a hundred years, people can look back and know what these two cars really meant. Maybe they can add a third new car to the competition. What will cars look like in the year 2123? I'm guessing we'll have new materials that haven't been invented yet, wild manufacturing technologies, and unimaginable propulsion systems. And Elon Musk will be an AI robot living on Mars, telling us all that full self-driving is only a year away. Thanks for watching. Huge thanks to my friend Jared over at JNH Classics. This is his Model T, and he has a build series on his channel that goes into all the weirdness and funkiness of this car. It's definitely worth checking out.